Hi, this is Landon Bryce from ThoughtCast.com, and today we're going to talk about the big question, the one everybody is always very excited to talk about. What causes autism? And the answer is, we don't know. Um, here's what we do know. There is an interplay of genetic and environmental factors. That means that um, some of it has to do with the heredity from the parents, and some of it has to do with things that happen either during the gestation or during the, the um, early early childhood. Um, and that's really what we know, or at least that's what we think we know at this point in time. Um, one of the things that's interesting about autism research is that as people have continued to research it, the question of what causes autism becomes more and more complex. Um, one of the things that I, I think is really true in Thomas Insel's piece, um, Insel is the director of the National Institute of Mental Health, um, and he wrote a, a piece that I find pretty disturbing that I want to talk about a little piece. But one of the things that he says that's really true is that we're dealing with autisms rather than autism. There's going to be multiple causes and multiple really things that we're talking about that we're currently lumping together and calling autism right now. I think that's definitely true. Um, and he's actually very interesting uh, talking about uh, de novo mutations, which uh, we're currently discovering are very likely a huge aspect of, of, of autism. Um, but at, at the end of the piece, he says something that, that disturbs me very much, and, and it's this. Um, Finally, an unavoidable insight from these new papers is that autism, even when genetic, may be spontaneous and not inherited in the sense that one or both parents carry some reduced form of the syndrome. Perhaps this insight will finally reduce the blame the parents' legacy perpetuated for too long in the absence of scientific evidence. Okay, um, I guess the first thing that really disturbs me about this is that I don't think it's blaming parents to acknowledge that there is very likely a hereditary component to autism. I don't... In fact, I think that suggesting that is actually pretty offensive. Um, I think, you know, if you have a genetic predisposition towards autism and you have kids, you're, those kids are pretty likely to have some, some autism themselves. Um, but that's not blaming you for their autism. That's, that's a weird thing to say. Um, I also need to talk a little bit about the fact that Insul has apparently forgotten something that he knew the week before, and that's that there are studies. Um, he was talking the week before about autism prevalence and the fact that the, the studies, you know, there's a, there's a mixture of information. We have some, some information that seems to indicate that the rate of autism is rising and some that seems to indicate that the rate of autism is constant. Um, he knew about the studies in, in England uh, last last week that, 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 that indicated that there's a constant rate of autism. But this week, that's something he doesn't know anymore. He forgot. Um, and he talks about how, you know, well, what is causing this rise in autism? Well, it's very likely that there's not a rise in autism. Okay. Um, there, it's possible that there is. It's possible that there is. It's possible that there isn't. Um, it would be nice if that was something that he'd remembered this week, and if he had not equated uh, hereditary no, aspects of autism with blaming parents, which, again, I just think is very offensive and ignorant. Um, so, um, all right, let's talk now a little bit about fat moms and old dads and all that stuff, um, because there's this tendency to mix up correlation and causation. Um, correlation are two things that happen to co that happen to coincide. They happen together. Causation is one thing that causes something else. Um, and so there are these new studies that indicate um, there's a high correlation between mothers who uh, are obese during pregnancy, who are fat when they're pregnant, and their kids having autism. They're 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 more likely. Um, and um, that certainly might be true. Uh, I mean, and I, I, I think actually 
raising awareness of people wanting to maintain a healthy weight during during pregnancy. That's a very good thing to do. Um, but it's also, frankly, possible that um, people with autism tend to have a difficult relationship with food. Uh, the studies that have been done on uh, autism and weight have indicated that people tend to have more of a problem with low weight, um, but um, those studies have fo focused both on children and on males, and it may not be the same with females. So, um, in fact, um, there may be, um, it may be the fact that women who have a propensity towards autism may be more less may be less likely to have a healthy weight during pregnancy now i don't think that's more likely than 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 actually being obese during pregnancy does something that causes autism i think that 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 is possible as well but you know correlation and causation aren't the same things it's it's the same thing with the dad study there's um, the best I understand about this, and it's difficult because I haven't been able to actually read the, the papers themselves, um, is that they're, they're putting together three different pieces of information. They're putting together the fact that um, children with autism have more of these de novo mutations, that with the fact that fathers, uh, men, uh, tend to have more of these de novo mutations as they age, with the fact that um, there's studies that indicate that fathers are more likely uh, when they are older, when they're 40 or older, to have kids who are autistic. So putting those three things together, they're suggesting that um, there may be a link between these de novo mutations and um, father's age. Um, but it... it I don't understand the part where they're uh, where they're doing anything more than drawing a logical conclusion from these. And again, that may be there. Um, I just I I haven't been able to read the actual papers themselves. I'm hoping I'll be able to do that later. Maybe they won't be behind a paywall. Um, but um, the significant thing to me here is that. Um, you know, with a study that indicates that there may... I mean, again, this is very logical conjecture. Um, I'm not saying that this is not good research, but it's research that's really in the beginning stages in terms of having any practical impact. And it's also, frankly, possible that the study that indicated that fathers uh, who are older are more likely to have autistic children may have something to do with the fact that I think people, men especially, who are... Uh, who have significant traits of autism are more likely to marry late in life, and so therefore may have be older when they have kids. Um, again, um, I don't mean to push too much this heredity thing, but but I think um, you have to be really careful uh, not to push too far ahead of things. You know, um, there's there's been a couple of articles in the last day where they're talking the fast pace of autism research is just going so fast, and I in some ways it is, but um, these are still just promising hypotheses. And, you know, I, I think there's really no doubt that the most effective treatments for autism thus far have been educational. Um, and I get very frustrated that rather than putting money into educational treatments for autism, uh, and doing further research about coming up with effective ones, we put all of our billions and billions and billions of dollars into um, creating medical treatments that um, I think we don't understand the causation and the, the apparatus well enough of autism yet to really try to make drugs, and they're still doing it. And to me, that makes very little sense. So... Um, oh, one more thing. There's also a lot of research that's being done now, not in human brains, like they're taking stem cells from autistic kids and growing autistic cells, brain cells from it, or they're like, you know, making fake autistic mice. Um, and I, I'm really dubious about this research. The, the brain is such a complex environment in and of itself to try to, um, replicate, you know, just by saying the cell itself is going to be similar to what's going on inside the human brain, I think is, is just, um, well, I think it's, it's, it's a waste of money, frankly, um, because it's so, 
<laughs> dissimilar um, to the actual environment that you want to study. Anyway, um, so that's what I have to say about autism research today.